everyone for coming this evening. I appreciate there are some that are coming long distances, there's some coming from the other end of town, and some that are actually coming from out of town, so I appreciate everybody making the effort to get here. And um, we do have a, a bit of house cleaning that we do at the beginning here, just a few slides. My name is Deb Angus, I'm the founder of this group. And as we mentioned earlier, this was started in November 2016. I'm a traumatic brain injury survivor slash warrior. The reason why we say that is that we don't consider ourselves survivors, uh, especially the ones like us that are dealing with long-term traumatic brain injuries. I, I was diagnosed as mild, borderline moderate. This is lifelong. This is never going to go away. So how am I ever going to outlive this? A survivor, a cancer survivor, will outlive their disease, but traumatic brain injury, you do not outlive this. It is with you for the rest of your life. So we, we started calling a lot of us on Facebook groups, not, and even in the book before I got on the Facebook, we call ourselves warriors because we're not survivors, even though we are. But <laughs> And um, uh, I'm an author, speaker, and advocate. I wrote this book here, Regaining Consciousness, um, in 2014, over a period of 10 years, so from 20, oh, 2004 to 2014. I was writing and researching while I was working full-time and also recovering. And um, uh, my passion was just to, that people needed to know about this, families needed to know about this. Once I got into my rehab and really understood what a brain injury was, I could then recognize the symptoms of my husband who at that time, we had been dealing with it for 11 years and had no idea. He was rear-ended at a red light by a drunk driver. So that's when I said after 11 years of living with that and then realizing my recovery process, I said families need to know about this, how easily it happens and how it affects people. And that's what my driving passion was for all this. And Josephine, uh, she's my cohort on this. Um, she's a former healthcare nurse and uh, I met her in 2016 uh, through another mutual friend and uh, we were just chatting one time out for a walk at the park and I always told her this is something I wanted to do and so she kind of got behind me and said, well get going and do this. <laughs> so that's how we got here. So why are we here? To help raise awareness about the seriousness of concussions and traumatic brain injuries to help you understand the symptoms of a concussion, how easily these injuries happen, the healing process for concussions and brain injuries, to share coping strategies to help you better understand this injury, and to help you live well while recovering, and to help you recognize that multiple concussions can lead to serious consequences that can impact your career, your relationships, and your future health. We also have medical disclaimer here. The ideas, suggestions, general principles, and conclusions presented are subject to your personal health and sound medical advice. Every possibility is not represented here, nor do we presume that all possibilities relate to your specific situation. This awareness group is not a substitute for recognized medical advice or treatment. Always consult your healthcare practitioner for medical advice. We have group guidelines here as well. Thoughts, feelings, experiences shared in this group will stay in this group. Please respect others' right to keep their information private. Accept and respect what is unique to each attendee in the group. Be respectful of other spirituality, religion, and belief systems. Allow others equal time for sharing. And if you prefer to remain silent and pass on sharing at any time, please feel free to do so. And here is also a nice little reminder. I'm going to have to change that color in the font to yeah. shut our cell phones off. <laughs> and uh, this was a result of our feedback from last May, uh, our meeting structure. We have uh, usually around a 20-minute presentation where we discuss different topics. And it's been requested by some of our attendees who are fairly high symptomatic, and they can't sit here and listen and attend for an hour, an hour and a half. So they've asked for it to have a 10-minute break or quiet time. So I will be asking at that point if anybody needs to take a break. Then we follow up with another our, the rest of our presentation. Sometimes we bring in a guest speaker. And then following that, if you need another break, or we go straight into our sharing circle afterwards, of which we do not record because that is private. So we'll get right into our presentation for this evening. Part three, we had a series here um, that we've done the last three months. And this one's called Redefining Normal. And these are the topics we'll be talking about today. Understanding loss of self, managing your recovery, and nutrition to support brain health and healing. Redefining normal. I remember when I first come across this, and I'm always looking for humorous things. Normal's just a setting on the washing machine. 
we always get so hung up that I'm not the way I used to be and I can't do this and I can't do that. And it's just like there's a different ways of handling that. Don't put so much stress into yourself. And this is a good quote here I like from Cheryl Sullivan. She's a brain injury survivor and she wrote a book, Brain Injury Survival Kit. And I think and it was called Brain Injury. Oh, yeah. Brain, okay, I'm getting it mixed up with somebody else. Brain Injury Survival Kit. She was a, a medical doctor and she suffered her own concussion and she realized her, both her mother and father were also dealing with concussions from falls in the home. And so she put together this workshop or this uh, toolkit. And she says here, normal must take on a new definition. When someone loses a leg, no one expects that person to get back to normal. The expectation is for that person to learn to compensate with a new prosthesis. Because brain injury is invisible to many, the expectation is that the person will return to his or her, self or her previous self. This is often not the case, especially when you're dealing with mild or moderate or severe traumatic brain injury. So we'll, we'll get into the first part here of part three is understanding loss of self. This concept applies more to those who have ongoing issues for several months or years following a serious enough injury or multiple concussions which have been classified as mild, moderate or severe traumatic brain injury. It can sometimes apply to those with concussion, especially if you're dealing with symptoms for several months and or dealing with post-concussion syndrome, which can go on for a year or maybe two. And this is my model that I came up with to try and uh, explain easily to the people the different jargon and terminology that everybody's hearing out there. And uh, concussion is part of the traumatic brain injury continuum. And my... Uh, uh, um, point of contention here in a lot of research, a lot of organizations, and this is an evolving field so that nobody has really set definitions or anything, but the one that really gets me, mostly because I was diagnosed as mild traumatic brain injury, borderline moderate, and it was in response to several concussions throughout my lifetime, which I was not aware of the three previous ones at all. And so now I've come across a lot of statements and research and articles out there. It says concussion, also known as mild traumatic brain injury. And that's not true. They do overlap some ways in the symptoms in that. Concussion basically, as we discussed in our earlier sessions. Hello, welcome. Sorry. No problem. There's a seat over here or over here you can have. And in our earlier sessions, if you watched any of the videos that are posted up on our website or our YouTube page, you can understand the, the basics of concussion and the consequences of multiple concussions. Those are must-watch videos for you to understand that. So basically, a basic concussion um, is uh, you don't have to hit your head and you don't have to lose consciousness. It's that sudden jarring movement, and you're kind of dazed for a little while. And a lot of people refer to it as, oh, I got my bell rung. That's a concussion. That's how easily it happens. And usually, if that's your first injury that you've had like that, you can get better usually within a couple of weeks, maximum maybe two months, if that's your first injury. And now I'm coming across a lot of people, especially the ones that are curious enough to come here, that they are having issues much, much longer than that, maybe a year, two years, three years. Dean, you've been dealing with this for seven. And so what we're finding out is that they've had multiple concussions, which gets them into the territory now of mild, moderate, and severe. And I did come across a researcher who said, how many is too many? And he said in his estimation, three to four. This was my fourth concussion that I had in 2001, and I had three priors that I did not know throughout my lifetime, and it got me into the mild, borderline, moderate territory. And this is the cumulative effect of concussions that the general public is not aware of. Loss of self ends the life you knew and loved and the person you once were. This is devastating loss for a lot of people. I know it was for me. And here's a quote by Dr. Diane Stoller. The greater your perceived loss of skills and abilities, the more extensive your sense of loss will be. Compulsively successful, high-achieving, intellectual people, for instance, often experience a power for loss of self if their thinking ability is even slightly impaired. 
very independent people who are seen by others as leaders, caretakers, or sources of guidance may be devastated if they become unable to live up to their previous self-reliant image. And I'm finding a lot of people here actually in this category. And these are the two books that Dr. Stoller wrote. The initial one here, Coping with Mild Traumatic Brain Injury, was the first book I read in 2002. And that one was published in 1998. She since updated it in 2013 with the, the second book there. And here's another quote here from the Brain Injury Resource Center. I love this website, so if you're looking for some good resources, and I do have this listed at the end of the presentation, headinjury.com, it's from Seattle, Washington. Loss of self is often the real tragedy of traumatic brain injury. It strips away a lifetime of learning, of personal identity, and personal power. The loss is a soul-shattering experience, intense and intimate. It is so intimate that society as a whole averts its eyes and closes its ears to the pain and despair of such a naked soul. You ever notice that there's a commercial on TV, you see a child, if they have a broken arm, they have lots of visitors and flowers and cards and everything, but mention they have a brain injury and nothing happens, nobody comes to visit because we can't handle it. The people who, are, who have no experience or education or knowledge about brain injuries, they, they don't understand it, they don't know what it is and they think, oh, well, I don't know what to say or what to do, so I'm, I'm, and this is what a lot of us survivors are finding, our family and friends are dropping away from us because we're not the same person anymore. Understanding loss of self. We experience loss of self with brain injury because we are now dealing with loss of sleep, energy, physical and cognitive abilities, like memory issues, um, balance issues, um, um, a spatial orientation is what I call it. I can't walk still to this day, especially when I've had relapses and upsets and other injuries and it takes time to recover again. I can't walk through my living room without bumping into something. And so this is uh, very frustrating for a lot of people. And I also have vision issues going on, as a lot of us do. And I said, I remember for years, I did, I have to grab something three times before I actually get it. I'm getting tired of this. I sure hope it improves someday. Well, it hasn't. <laughs> so we're also dealing with loss of skill sets, loss of confidence, sometimes loss of income if you're not able to keep your job. And a lot of people are losing their homes because of these injuries. And also family and friends, they give up on us because they do not understand this type of injury. We become difficult to be around all of a sudden because we have a lot of special requirements like low light, low noise, and all that type of thing, and people just can't handle it. So this is not only are we dealing with the physical and cognitive effects of this injury, we're dealing with all of this. And the biggest insult is when family and friends give up on you. Gone now is your, this is what I, this is from my book here. Gone now is your sparkle and your uniqueness. Because you, you're almost flatlined because you're spending so much of your energy just trying to stand up still and not fall over and, and dealing with light sensitivity, noise sensitivity. Your brains can't filter anymore so you're overloaded with all this environmental stuff. And it's just like, you're just flatlined because you're just trying to survive. You're just trying to get through the day. So you don't have the energy to go, ha, 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 ha. You don't have that anymore for a while, while, you, while you're in a deep sense of recovery here. Um, they have now been replaced with pain, anger, confusion, frustration. Uncertainty is the worst of it because we don't know. There's no timeline for when you're going to get better. Not like a broken arm when they say, oh, six weeks, you have a cast on, you'll be better. With brain injury, there's no timeline. And it's different for everybody. And the darkness of a seemingly unstoppable downward spiral and emptiness of blank space. Brain injury is isolating. It is very scary. You feel like you're losing your mind, especially when there's no knowledge or awareness about what a brain injury really is. And especially if you have no support around you. Many of us come face to face with realization we are a different person simply because we are now differently brained. We have to pick up the pieces of what we have left to work with, form a new identity and a new reality. And these are some quotes that are from Facebook groups of people that are starting to realize um, how this injury has been affecting them. It wasn't until I stopped being angry for what happened to me and mourned my loss that I could move on. 
I fought like hell because I missed the old me. I know for me I did for four years, and then I finally had to realize this is the way it is now. I have to learn to deal with what I have left and build a life from that. I did it, but it takes a long time. It takes a long time, a lot of patience. Uh, once I realized what I control, what I could control, and what I couldn't, my life got easier. I had to accept it, it is what it is, and to move on. Who would ever think we would have to someday have to grieve over losing ourselves? This is unthinkable <coughs> to most people. A brain injured person has lost a way of thinking, of speaking, of doing things, of interacting with the world and the people around them. Something unfathomable to anyone who has never experienced any type of traumatic event. Grieving is a vital part of our healing process. And Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, uh, she was a, a Swiss psychotherapist, and she came up with this. Um, she since passed away, I think, in 65 or 95, but she's gone now. But she's highly respected. She wrote a lot of books on grief and grieving. And she came up with the five steps of the grief cycle. First is denial, which comes also as avoidance, confusion, elation, elation, shock, and fear. Then there's anger, frustration, irritation, and anxiety. Bargaining, struggling to find meaning, reaching out to others, and telling one story. I couldn't stop talking to people, just trying to explain to them what was going on. Because a lot of them in the workplace would just look at me and say, well, it's been two years now. Why aren't you getting better? You know, so it's really abuse. People just don't understand. So and then the depression sets in, overwhelmed, helplessness, hostility, and flight. Acceptance, exploring options, new plan in place, and moving on. All this comes in waves, and it also comes with also here information and communication. And that's why this group and this type of information is so important for you to understand and for your family and friends to understand. Emotional support you must have and guidance and direction. And this is from my book. For several years, this loss of self was not an easy concept for me to grasp. I knew it had happened. I understood or understand how this happened and acknowledged I had been left with the shell of a person who vaguely resembled the woman I once was. I lost my sparkle. That's <laughs> how I refer to it. It haunted me terribly that I could still remember the person I used to be and found I continued clinging to the hopes that I could once again attain being that person. However, reality eventually sank in and I had to come to terms with not being the person I once was. We'll now move on to how to overcome loss of self and learn to appreciate the new person you are becoming. Discovering your new self, and the big thing to start here is you believe in yourself and you believe in your abilities, which are changed now. TBI is a life-changing and identity-altering event. It can be devastating, it can be a devastating period in our lives. With knowledge and self-acceptance, you can begin to trust your basic instincts, instincts and find the courage to build and shape a new reality, a new identity, and learn to become comfortable in your skin again. Discovering your new self is an exciting, scary, and frustrating process, just as any growing process can be. But don't despair and never lose hope. With hard work, perseverance, willingness to learn, explore, and be creative, you will eventually become more comfortable, comfortable with your newfound abilities and find a sense of accomplishment and pride in your achievements. There are many things you can do during this period of discovering your newfound self to help with the uncertainties and frustrations. They all, may also help you discover your strengths and develop new interests. Hold the vision and trust the process. Most importantly, through all of this, you need to be kind, gentle, and patient with yourself. A lot of us get so frustrated, we just, why can't I do that anymore? I know I did that when I went to rehab, and I have tears running down my face, and I'm trying to talk about, she was an occupational therapist, and I'm trying to talk about how I do things at work, because I continued working through all this, I can't believe it. And she's, 
and I'm t a lot, uh, tears running down my face, and I said, why can't I do things the way I used to? And she just went like this and held her hand up in front of me. That was your old self. We're now dealing with your new self. We're now here to work with the deficits that you now are dealing with. And I had not a clue that she was talking about. And I found some things that helped me anyways. I found to learn to laugh at myself. I was making mistakes, I was bumping into things, I was actually even falling down. And I couldn't even tie bowls for crap and I'd just be laughing. And I can't even do a simple thing like this. <laughs> Make time to be by yourself and learn to like yourself one, once again. And treat yourself often to things that make you feel good and help you to relax. Simple thing like soaking in the tub or going for a massage, going for a walk in nature, surrounding yourself with beauty. Practice all the self-care and coping strategies we discussed in parts one and two. If you were not here for those meetings, they are posted up, the videos are posted up on our Facebook page and also on YouTube. Explore and rediscover your sense of values, which more or less may have changed as well. Explore things that interest you, things that make you feel alive. Yeah, sorry. And here are some examples. Volunteer work, exploring new interests, new ho learning new hobbies, developing new skills meeting new people, and join interest groups that you are curious about. There's probably something, a little thought niggling at the back of your brain, that you've been so busy with marriage and children and work and everything, and you, there's something back there that you said, oh, you know, I've always wanted to try that. Now's the time to start exploring those types of interests. Don't put your life on hold anymore. Because when you're doing new things like that, you're discovering your new strengths and your new direction in life. We have to relearn everything all over again about ourselves, about the environment we live in, the people around us, and how the world works. Because like I said earlier, we're dealing with so much sensory overload, we can't make sense of ourselves, never mind what's going on around us. And we have to learn to find the environments that support our health and our healing. You can't be going to bars anymore and drinking alcohol and dancing in the music and stuff like that. It's not conducive to a brain injury. You can't sometimes even go to a mall and go shopping for two hours, maybe 10, 15 minutes. So you do have to learn to, to, to live differently. Our learning styles may have been greatly affected, so we may have to constantly readjust, rethink, and retry everything until we find what works best. This is so frustrating and extremely exhausting. So that's why you need your brain breaks quite often during the day. You need to reassess your goals, reassess your strengths, and reassess your relationships. And like I said, that website, braininjury.com, was a, a godsend for me. And I found something in there, and I'm still trying to find it. There's so much information on there, and it was about goal setting. And they had a worksheet and an inventory sheet and all that kind of stuff. And ever since I found that, I've been off and running. <laughs> Because it gave me direction instead of concentrating, boo hoo, all this is happening, I don't know. It gave me, it put me over here and saying, what else can I be doing in my life? What can I be, what changes can I make? Because I don't want to be here anymore. Living well in spite of TBI requires our utmost attention to every detail of our lives. We have to learn how to work through pain, adversity, and within our new limitations. We have to learn to work smart, conserve our energy, and become highly focused and deliberate in everything we do. Heading out willy-nilly every day like you used to do is not conducive to your brain health. You have to have a plan. You're going to go out and say, OK, I have to go out and do this, this, and this. But I would find even the most positive frame of mind I could ever be in. And heading out, and I said, oh yeah, I have three things to do, so I'm going to, this is going to be great, and it's a good day, and I had a great sleep. Well, on my first event, I would encounter something, one of my stressors, that just knocked me right on my ass. And I would have to go home, and I said, well, the other two are going to have to wait till tomorrow. So this big, huge part of acceptance here. Here's some more quotations. This is Susan Connors. I don't know if she still is. I should have looked this up. But uh, President and CEO of the Brain Injury Association of America. She said, uh, the loss of self is about regaining, or discovering your new self, is about regaining cognitive skills, 
but also about managing loss as well as acceptance and finding your new place in the world. <coughs> Whoever thought I'd be an author of a book and I'd be standing up here talking to people? I, that was not on my radar, <laughs> but I found new interests. I would also like to add, in, in, in addition to what uh, Susan has said here, it is also about reinstating your confidence, your dignity, and finding once again some quality of life. So we're not doing too badly time-wise. A uh, couple of glasses on here. Some people need some break here. Yeah. You good? Yeah. What? Are you okay to continue? I wouldn't mind a break, but we can. I will on you guys. Yeah, we'll honor that. So what we do is we just have quiet time. I'll shut the lights off. If you want to lay down on the floor here, you can do that as well. And if anybody would like to go out and get some fresh air or make some phone calls or whatever, or you're free to sit here and, and, and be quiet. And we'll be back. Is five minutes okay or seven minutes okay? Did you want to lay down? No. Are you sure? I'm going to shut the lights off then. And now we'll get on to section two here, part three, managing your recovery. Studies have shown that when people are more informed and involved in the management of their pain, they feel better and are more satisfied. So applying that theory to concussion and brain injury recovery, it's so important to educate yourself about these injuries. Share what you've learned with family, friends, and coworkers. Ensure you have support around you to help lessen stress and misunderstanding, and find the right doctors and therapists for the help that you need. Obtaining a proper diagnosis is key. If you do not agree with what a doctor or practitioner is telling you, you're within your right to seek a second or even a third opinion. Ensure that a rehab program follows the testing and diagnosis. Rehab must be based on the results of your testing, and they must address your specific issues and your deficits. Find the right doctor and right practitioners. Just because you've found someone who claims they can offer you help does not mean they are the right person for you. If ever you are not happy with a practitioner, seek another. And talk to other concussion and brain injury survivors. They might have practitioners that they're very happy with. Keep an open mind on trying all forms of rehabilitation and recovery practices. There are various healing modalities that are worth exploring. But be aware that some may work for others, may not work for you. Everybody is different, depending on your, your, your deficits, your, how severe your brain injury is and how you are supporting your brain health and your brain recovery. If you're not doing a good job, nothing's gonna work. Go over and above what you have learned. Be willing to try anything and everything you can think of for healing and brain rewiring. So I was perfect guinea pig for this kind of stuff. I'm such a curious person. So I've, I found that anything that I enjoyed doing as a young girl was terrific. And it's simple things like playing Scrabble, playing that Jack's ball game, remember that when we were kids? At first when I started doing these, I was a disaster. I couldn't do it at all. But with practice, eventually I got it and it started giving me joy. And I go, hey, this is, so this is my brain is rewiring while I'm learning and I'm having fun. <coughs> I thought it was great. Playing Monopoly, I found a software program that did it on the computer. And I couldn't figure out how the hell can they get something like this that's so complex to, in a software program, but it was fun. So look for that kind of stuff, anything that you enjoyed, even reading children's books, watching children's movies and cartoons. I just had a wall, <laughs> relearning all this stuff again. Participation in regular exercise improves your balance, respiratory fitness, cognitive abilities, and it elevates your mood to ward off depression. It promotes mental health to avoid problems with depression and anxiety which affects cognition, emotion, quality of life, cardiovascular, and your brain fitness. These are all things you could be doing on your own. There's no list out there a doctor or practitioner is ever going to give you and say, do this, 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 and this, and this, and it's like a magic pill and you'll be better. That's up to you to explore what works for you. Exercise the brain with regular brain training to improve cognitive abilities and build neural networks. 
So I, I don't know if some of you have heard about these brain training programs that are available online. You can even buy software packages. I found a couple that were in, intuitive, is what they call it, and I forget the name of it, but it was from a software company in Quebec, and I found it at London Drugs. And it was just all these little brain training exercises, and so, somehow this one would recognize my strengths and my weaknesses, and it started making things harder for me. <laughs> so it got a little frustrating after a while. And then I had Nintendo DS, and it came with Brain Age software, and I got Brain Age 2. And there's all kinds of brain training exercises in there, really simple things to do, and it had Sudoku in there. And I said, oh, I'll never be able to do that. I do, and I play it regularly now. Word finding puzzles, all these kinds of things. Look for different things that, you, you know, that are hard for you to do, and eventually they will get easier and move on to something else. Always be on the lookout for something that you could be doing. Rather, it's better than sitting there and uh, not doing anything or doing. It's coming up uh, on another slide here. Is a, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Strive for good nutrition with a low di uh, diet, low in fat, sugars, and refined carbohydrates. The third section coming up here, we'll be talking more about that. Avoid chemical dependencies such as caffeine. Yes, caffeine is not good for the brain. Tobacco, alcohol, and other drugs of abuse and avoid social isolation. Protect the brain from further injury. That means wearing personal protective equipment. Heaven forbid you know how hard this injury is on you and you don't want to get re-injured again. And the recovery process will be longer and harder the second time and the third time and the fourth time it's going to become permanent so you don't want to go down that road. Minimize falling accidents in and around the house. Ensure good quality sleep to help with impulse control, cognition, mood, emo attention, and immune function even. And ask questions. Never stop asking questions. Never hesitate to ask about anything you are not sure about or you want to learn more about. It's, bit, it's like you have to become a lifelong learner and you have to have curiosity about everything and anything. If you have a problem doing something, I, I was doing crafts and I, I was having trouble doing simple little things. Well, repetition worked for me. So I just kept at it and at it and at it and then I thought of other things that I could be doing that would be similar to that. And I would just keep trying and trying and trying. It was frustrating, it was hard. A lot of times I would get so angry and just shove it aside and then I would take a break and I'd come back and say, okay, I'll try it again. And eventually, it does get better. It takes a long time, that's the frustrating part about it. And practice self-care daily. This is what we discussed in part one, I think it was. Practice your coping strategies daily. Keep trying, never give up, and be kind to yourself. So you don't want to fall into ignoring your symptoms and pushing through, that is not good. You do not want to fall down the tunnel of alcohol and drugs because that makes your symptoms worse and it's a downward spiral and it's not good at all. You're not being productive. And social isolation, you don't want to be doing that. You want to be seeking the help that you need. You want to learn relaxation techniques and things that take care of yourself. And you want to do exercise and start setting goals and, and you can get running and going with your life. And so when you and, eliminate these and add those, you'll be on to your road to recovery. So now we're on to the third part here, nutrition to support brain health and healing. If your, brain and, if your body and your brain are clogged with fat deposits and accumulated toxins, how will it ever be able to cope when added, with added stress when you are injured and in pain? That's my number one premise in life for anything. And uh, my husband and I switched our, our whole lifestyle in 2001, and uh, in early 2001, and uh, I lost a lot of weight, and I've always been a tiny person anyways, but I was getting older and menopausal, and I thought, oh, well, this is just life. And then we changed our lifestyle, we adopted a plant-based diet, and not trying, not doing anything, just eating better, and I lost weight. And I said, oh, this is going to be a great summer, and I'm going to go out and do this and do that. And that's when we got rear-ended at the red light and brain injury happened. So that, I got, that all got robbed from me. So I was always aware of this, is that you have to get rid of the toxins in your body and the fat deposits in your body, and you have your body running at optimal. It's like an engine. You have your body running at optimal condition. You can change all that by becoming mindful of the food choices you have been making. 
gives your body and brain the nutrients and sustenance it needs, especially when challenged with any sort of medical issues and while it is working extra hard during the healing process. And here's a quote from a visualization and a biofeedback book I came across. Doing healthy things for your body will give your whole self the message, consciously and unconsciously, that you are intending on getting better and already in the process of doing so. Just a simple little change in your thought and getting up and doing something is just amazing what it does for the rest of your body and the way you think. Improve your diet to ensure good quality, natural nutrients are replenishing your body and your brain. Steer away from highly processed foods and all junk food. A lot of us are addicted to this stuff. They contain artificial colors, artificial flavors, flavor enhancers such as MSG, and nitro, nitro, I had this, <laughs> I was practicing this this afternoon. Micro, micro salmony. No, that's not it. It's like amino is in there. Yeah. <laughs> it, there, um, science has discovered that those uh, additives to foods are actually a risk factor in causing Alzheimer's disease in animal studies. Where do you find these uh, in, uh, chemicals? In processed foods, especially meat and salamis and all that kind of stuff. Bacon. You're just clogging your system with poisons. All foods high in fat, sugar, and salt with, no, with little to no nutritional value. They should not even be in your house. Switch to more plant-based diet, preferably organic. Avoid fried foods altogether. Avoid all sources of caffeine, coffee, tea, soda, chocolate, high energy drinks. I have to admit, I did for many, many years. Since I was a teenager, I avoided all caffeine. And I slowly got back into it. Probably in the 90s, I was doing some volunteer work. <coughs> was visiting an older lady and she would have a cup of tea when I went there, so I took a little sip. No cream, no sugar, no nothing, just black tea. Now I drink black tea. <laughs> and chocolate is, was off my list for four and a half years while I was on dialysis. It's back now. <laughs> I just do a little bit every day. Avoid white sugar, high fructose corn syrup. Oh, I could talk a whole afternoon about that. And all disguised sugar names. Fructose, dextrose, sucrose, Avoid all artificial sweeteners, aspartame, aspirite, equal, nutrasweet, saccharin, splenda, sucralose, sweet and low, pure brain poison. You do not want these in your house. And here's a chart I came across, hidden sugars. And um, this is from the website Healthy Kitchen, Healthy Body. And uh, it's just amazing some of the stuff that you come across. These are artificial sweeteners. So become aware of aspartame. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> I guess you can't touch the board. Um, aspartame, all chewing gums on the market are sweetened with aspartame. Don't ever buy them. Go to the natural food store, there's one called Pure, P-U-R, it's aspartame free. That's all I have in my house anymore. And I've been hunting high and low. Uh, Dentine was one of the last holdouts and so was Juicy Fruit. They all have aspartame in them now. You can get dentine plastic at the Nanton candy store, and it has sugar in it, not aspartame. Saccharin is not good, sucralose, all these things. And then there's sugar alcohols. And it's amazing how they hide them. Sorbitol, glycerin, malitol, malodextrin. So start reading your labels. It's amazing where you find all this stuff. HF. S, no, HFCS, high fructose corn syrup. Now, we're going to get into genetically modified foods. And high fructose corn syrup, any corn products, and corn is insidious, it's in everything. So we, uh, we started eliminating all GMO foods from our household in 2012. And it was just amazing where it was, all, it, it's just shocking, all the food products that have corn and corn byproducts in it. So start concentrating if you want on just one. Start knowing what corn products are and where they're being hidden. High fructose corn syrup is an excellent one to start with. That incorporates all conventional sodas on the market. Just amazing. And even uh, syrups and sauces. Um, even, uh, what was it I was looking for? 
a barbecue sauce. Anything I found at the regular grocery stores all had fructose corn syrup in it. And I was even looking for like a, um, what was it, a relish. I found one eventually, and I think it was just at one of the conventional grocery stores, and it didn't have high fructose corn syrup. I was just like, a yay in the aisle. <laughs> but you can find these products, but it does take a lot of looking around. And uh, the biggest thing is aspartame and high fructose corn syrup. So if you want to start being more aware of the sugars that are in your diet, those are the two good ones to start with. Stevia is a natural plant product and is an excellent choice for sweetener. As is honey, molasses, maple syrup, and agave syrup. Buy organic produce whenever possible to reduce ingesting poisonous pesticides. Now, everybody's going to say, well, I can't afford organic. Well, this will help you. Environmental Working Group has a dirty dozen list that they update every year. And for 2018, they have these 12 here. Strawberries, spinach, nectarines, apples, grapes, peaches, cherries, pears, tomatoes, celery, potatoes, and sweet bell peppers. If I'm going to eat any of those products, I will not buy conventional. I will only buy organic. And I even cross the line that I will not buy organic from Mexico or from South America. <laughs> or even if they bring it in from long distances like New Zealand, I would prefer something local if possible. And there are companies that are starting to do this more and more and more. I'm just so excited when I start seeing it. Not only is it organic, but it's local. And so there are some clean 15s here as well too. So these are less on the pesticide list, so um, you don't have to avoid too many things, just those top 12 are the worst ones there. So avocados, sweet corn, I have an issue with that because it's a GMO product. I will not eat corn unless it's uh, organic. Pineapples, cabbages, onions, sweet peas, papayas, asparagus, mangoes, eggplants, honeydews, kiwis, cantaloupes, cauliflower, and broccoli. If you can't afford to buy everything organic, those ones you can get away with because they are lower in pesticides. And don't worry, this is a lot to learn. I've been doing this since the 70s. <laughs> I was a health food fanatic for, for decades. Stop or reduce intake of saturated fats. They occur naturally in many foods. The majority come from animal sources, like meat and dairy products. Examples of foods with saturated fats. Fatty beef, lamb, pork, poultry with the skin, beef, tallow, beef fat or tallow, lard, cream, butter, cheese, and all other dairy products made from whole or reduced fat, 2% milk. Everybody's going to say, what the hell am I going to eat? <laughs> Many baked goods and fried foods can contain high levels of saturated fats. Some plant-based oils, such as palm oil and palm kernel oil and coconut oil, also contain primarily saturated fats, but they do not contain cholesterol. So there's kind of a, a trade-off there, a lot of palm oil because of that. And a lot of people say, well, it has no cholesterol, so it must be okay for me, but it's still a saturated fat. Keep your body and your brain well hydrated with pure, preferably filtered drinking water. Invest in a good quality filtration system that connects right to your kitchen faucet. I'm sorry, I have no faith in the pitcher ones at all. This is the one I have at home here. It's a very simple one. That little silver part there connects right up to my faucet. And there's a little, you run the water and you pull out the little tab and then it goes through the filtration system, wait for that to get cold and then there's your water and that's what I, I drink all the time. They have more complicated system. Uh, this is a countertop one and these are under the counter ones and they have three filters there. But they're more expensive depending on the, your kitchen and your space and your, your budget. And then people even go more and they, they incorporate a reverse osmos system into their water system as well too. So these are all things that are available that you could be doing to ensure you have good clean drinking water. And the amazing thing about this, I think we start, we bought this in 2010 and we couldn't believe that we didn't do it sooner. And there's a chart there and it takes out stuff like um, fluoride, which we had in our drinking water then, but we don't now, but they might bring it back. So things like prescription drugs. Do you know that the uh, sanitation system, the water cleaning that they have in urban centers doesn't take out prescription drugs. So you're also you're getting minute amounts of people's Prozac. <laughs> 
and Xanax and all uh, uh, birth control pills and HRT and everything like that. I don't want that in my drinking water. I've got enough going on in my body. I don't want that added to it. So to me, it was a good investment to buy. And I, we just went with the cheapest one, and it sits on our countertop because we're in a rental. Avoid and replace all products containing aluminum, cookware, and foil. I will not allow foil to touch my food. I do camp out cookouts and a, a, a campfire with my friend, and uh, we do it in foil because it's going right into the coals. But I lay down a, a layer of parchment paper for my food, and then I fold it all up, and the parchment paper is covering my food. The foil will not touch my food. <laughs> Certain dietary supplements contain aluminum, calcium supplements, antacids. Food additives used in processed foods, such as sodium aluminum phosphate in processed cheese. Table salt has added sodium silico aluminate or aluminum calcium silicate added to help it run smoothly. I switched over to the pink Himalayan salt, and I get a lot more minerals from that as well too. White flour. Uh, basically, avoid anything white. White sugar, white flour. <laughs> <laughs> all the white stuff has no nutritional value to it at all. White flour has potassium alum is added to it to whiten the flour. And baking powder also has aluminum added to it. So I buy the ones, and you can get it at conventional grocery stores now or at the natural food stores. And it's regular baking powder. You can use it. I like all the other stuff, but it says no aluminum. And also beverages in aluminum cans, such as sodas and beers. If you are going to partake in any of these things, switch over to glass bottles. These are minute little things, little changes you can be doing in your life to promote your brain health. Avoid products and items containing bisphenol A, BPA. Everybody's heard about that. It's a xenoestrogen, exhibiting estrogen mimicking hormone-like properties. It's an endocrine disruptor. So this has made big news for the last 10 years or so, I guess. It's used to make plastic such as polycarbonate water bottles, such as this one right here, which is kind of an oxymoron. You're, you're paying extra money to buy this spring water or purified water, and they put it in a polycarbonate <laughs> container. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me at all. Plastic food storage containers, now a lot of them are becoming, uh, you'll see them on the labels there, it says BPA free and that kind of stuff, but be careful if you're buying anything used at garage sales or at dollar stores that they're importing from other countries, and uh, they're probably not BPA free. Uh, plastic sport water bottles, uh, a lot of them will say it's BPA free, but again, if they're being imported from other countries, they're probably not BPA free, better switch over to a, a stainless steel one. Baby, uh, plastic baby bottles, they are now banned in Canada, but in case you visit other countries or in case you do mail order and you don't know the origin of where these products are coming from, I wouldn't take the chance. Switch over to glass or just buy the BPA free ones in Canada. Can products with plastic lining inside the cans. Sports equipment has BPA in it as well as CDs and DVDs. And epoxy resins containing BPA are used to line water pipes. Another reason to have a water filtration system installed on your faucet. And thermal paper, such as that used in sales receipts. Don't touch them if you can avoid it, and if you do have to, just touch them as minimal as possible. I just tell them, put them in the bag. <laughs> avoid genetically modified foods, GMOs. They first hit the market in 96. Since then, most of us have eaten GMOs in many foods, from soybeans, beef, dairy products, corn, beets, sugar, cottonseed, and canola oil. When humans digest genetically modified foods, the artificially created genes transfer into and alter the character of the beneficial bacteria in the intestine. This results in various health issues, an increase in allergies and allergic reactions, antibiotic resistance, increased IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, food sensitivities, sensitivities and other gut issues, I had a friend who could not eat corn. She can't go near corn at all. It just really upsets her gut and everything. And I said, well, just try an experiment. Buy organic corn and just try one or two kernels and you know, see how that goes. And then she ate a, a bowl of it. And she said, not a problem at all. And I said, because the other stuff is GMO. Stay away from it. 
increased pesticide exposure. Uh, a lot of these GMO foods are designed to be Roundup ready, which is the fertilizer that Monsanto is designing and building and selling for all that kind of stuff. And they've been linked to reproductive damage, cancer, Alzheimer's disease, and diabetes. Isn't it strange that the last three there, cancer, Alzheimer's, and diabetes, there's research now saying that these are all autoimmune diseases. So GMOs are affecting our immune systems. Follow an, an anti-inflammatory diet. I don't know if you've heard about this. I went to a seminar at Community Natural Foods and there was a neuroscientist there who was talking about anti-inflammatory diets. Um, inflammation and an increase in free radicals occur in the brain post-injury. Researchers have discovered that eating neuroprotective, anti-inflammatory, and antioxidant foods may help reduce the long-term effects from TBI. Antioxidants are found in a variety of spices like turmeric. A lot of people on Facebook are raving about turmeric. Apparently it's clearing up brain fog. And you can, there's recipes online you can find. You can just add it into your foods now, but you can make a turmeric tea and drink that daily as well too. It's also in fruits and vegetables, especially blueberries and kale. Anti-inflammatory foods include green leafy vegetables, beets, broccoli, blueberries, again, gets mentioned, coconut oil, walnuts, chai seeds, and pineapple. Avoid foods with high glycemic index as sugar creates inflammation in the body and the brain. Investigate the gut-brain connection. Start Googling. Increase good gut bacteria. Add probiotics to your diet. You can get them with supplements that are kept in your refrigerator, probiotic yogurts, and other food items. A lot of manufacturers now are adding probiotics to their foods. Add fermented foods to your diet. The microflora that lives in fermented foods creates a protective lining in the intestines and shields it against pathogenic factors such as salmonella and E. coli. So you get those from sourdough bread, and it has to be a good sourdough bread. I got one from Lakeview Bakery, I paid just under $8 for it and I had on it on the label natural sourdough. It has no yeast and no sugar in it. I cannot believe the difference it is making. And I just started it a couple days ago and it's just amazing. Couldn't believe it. So you have to pay good money for have a good sourdough bread. Kimchi, sauerkraut, kefir, kumbacha, miso, and tempeh. I did buy some kimchi. It's like a fermented uh, Korean or Japanese cabbage. I haven't used it yet, but I have it there. <laughs> you use it as a condiment or something you put in on, on sandwiches and that type of thing. Sauerkraut, I can't stand, so that's why I'm trying all the other ones. Kefir, kumbacha, you'll see that in a lot of drinks and that. There's a brand called Rise. I really enjoy that one and because they have one that has rose in it. And I, I'm a fanatic about anything with rose. <coughs> and miso and tempeh, these are soy products and you can get them at natural food stores. Yeah. Magnesium acts as a neuroprotective agent. With TBIs, magnesium levels are reduced, causing an influx of glutamate and calcium into the postsynaptic neuron. This can lead to cell death and neuronal degeneration. This is similar to the chemical cascade that we talked about in our first video at our September presentation about what is a concussion. So if you would like to review that, that might be a good idea. Foods rich in magnesium include spinach, chard, almonds, black beans, avocado, pumpkin seeds, and bananas. Zinc is another neuroprotective agent. Foods high in zinc include spinach, kidney beans, flax seeds, pumpkin seeds, watermelon seeds, garlic, and peanuts. Omega-3s and omega-6 fatty acids are essential to our health, but they cannot be re produced by the body. Many experts recommend animal products as a source of omega-3s and 6s, but it is possible to find in plant-based foods such as flaxseed, flaxseed oil, walnuts, chai seeds, and non-GMO soybean oil. So that is a basic overview of the nutritional aspects that you can be incorporating into your life to help uh, improve your brain injury recovery and brain healing. So happy exploring and uh, uh, trying out all these new foods into your diet. So as a recap, Redefining Normal basically has been the entire session, uh, part one, two, and three that we've covered in the last three sessions here where we've talked about positive affirmations, deep breathing, relaxation response technique, mindfulness meditations, loving kindness, 
self-care, managing your energy, improving sleep hygiene, sound and vibrational healing with music, understanding loss of self, managing your recovery, and nutrition to support brain health and brain healing. So these are things that you may not have even heard of, but these are part of now your new normal when you can incorporate these things into your life to support your brain health and your brain healing. And to recap, we have a few points here to uh, review about redefining normal. Number one, take responsibility for your own recovery. Number two, adopt a lifelong learning attitude. Number three, learn and practice all modes of self-care. Number four, be willing to explore all healing modalities. Number five, slow down your pace in life. Number six, learn relaxation techniques. Number seven, lessen your responsibilities. Number eight, lessen the stressors in your life. Number nine, lessen mindless activities. Number ten, explore your new self and build upon your strengths and interests and abilities. Number eleven, become conscious of all decisions you make. And number 12, redesign your, li redesign your life to support your health and your continued brain healing. And we'll wrap up this session with this quote from Maya Angelou. If you're always trying to be normal, you'll never know how amazing you can be. And these are the resources that I used to put together this session. Number one here was my book, Regaining Consciousness. It is available from the Calgary Public Library. And at our monthly meetings, when you attend here, you can buy it from the meeting here. And also on the website, Saranova, saranovapublishing.com, you can buy it there, mail order, with shipping uh, charges applied. Also, we used a book from Elizabeth Kubler-Ross on grief and grieving. If you may want to explore that a little bit more to uh, uh, better understand the grieving process of loss of self. And other resources we used uh, for this session here is the Environmental Working Group, uh, their Shopper's Guide to Pesticides and Produce, Healthy Kitchen, Healthy Body, Aluminum Containing Colloidal Minerals, Bisphenol A, Definition from Wikipedia, Four Potential Health Risks of Eating GMO Foods, and How to Nourish an Injured Brain. If you're interested in any of those resources, there's the URLs you can read those articles online. And to recap the concussion support service that are available here in Calgary, there's the Brain Injury, the Calgary Brain Injury Program, Alberta Healthy Living Program, Community Accessible Rehab, and Brain Injury Assist Limited Supports for Community Living and Save at Southern Alberta Brain Injury Society. If you have not attended any of these uh, organizations and the support services they offer, you can check out their websites there and some of them have phone numbers. You can contact them for further information. Uh, the Community Accessible Rehab one, uh, you need a referral from your family doctor to get into that program and you do need to be having uh, symptoms uh, three months at least to get into that program. And I also like to share the survivor organized support groups for concussion that are available here in Calgary. Concussion Life, they meet the first Monday each month down in Kensington and they have a website there, concussionlife.org. Uh, the other one is Concussion Info and Support Group. They are a meetup group. They meet twice monthly at the downtown co-op market and they have uh, information there on the meetup website. And then there's our group, Calgary Concussion Awareness and Support. We meet the last Thursday of each month at Brentwood Community Centre and we, uh, you can find us on Facebook. And there are also several online support groups for concussion available on Facebook. Um, there's a, a list here of various ones that are available, but if you are on Facebook, just start searching for concussion or traumatic brain injury um, uh, support groups, and the whole list of them will come up. You need to join them, and you don't need to participate but it's, uh, if you don't want to, but it's interesting to follow them and hear uh, comments and, and suggestions from the other members. Uh, the pink concussion one is for females over 25, so that might be of interest for uh, most of you. And uh, there's also post-concussion syndrome support groups, and there's also caregivers and parents 
uh, groups as well too available so you can search for those on Facebook. And for our upcoming meetings, we meet the last Thursday of every month from September to May, but not December. And we will be taking a break over the summer months. Our next meeting is scheduled for September 27th. And our future topics are to be determined. I'll be thinking about things that we can put sessions together for over the summer. And based on the feedback uh, sheets, we'll be getting at tonight's meeting. And uh, I sure we'll have a, an exciting lineup ready for you in September. So hope to see many of you then. And this is a screenshot of our Facebook page. Um, please stop by and like our Facebook page and uh, we can all help raise awareness of concussions and brain injuries. And that is the end of our session for this evening. If there's any comments or questions, otherwise we'll head right over to our open discussion. And we do not record that part when we have our sharing circles. That is private. So thank you very much for everyone who attended this evening.